Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up a metal watercolor palette. This is a Meaden watercolor palette that I ordered off of Amazon and it came with empty half pans, which is great. It means I don't have to supply my own. And I'm going to be filling this with my Holbein Artist Watercolors. This is an 18 color set. You guys will be able to see the review for this set soon. So we're going to open it up and then show it to you guys. This is a 24 possible color palette. It seems like that one doesn't want to go all the way down. That's okay. It's what I get for being cheap and buying a cheap palette. What these are typically used for is you could put a dot of additional colors in there or you can use them for mixing. Same with this up here. So filling a palette is a little time consuming but it's actually very easy. I'm also going to be mapping this palette out but I'm going to do that after these have dried. So I'm going to open up our included half pans and I'm going to want a fine point permanent marker. This one may have to just be fine enough and what I'm going to do is on the half pan I'm going to actually, because these are color coded, I'm going to write the color code on either the side or the bottom. W O 10 and then I'm going to write the brand on the bottom and that's particularly useful when I use a mixed brand palette so in this little metal palette you can see this is removable we're going to bend all of these out these are used to help keep the pans in place I find that these are often not enough so I will usually put a bit of washi tape on the bottom of each pan, but I'm kind of thinking, I have some rare earth magnets, I'm kind of thinking about going and getting those now. Problem with that is I'd have to put a piece, a bit of glue on the bottom of each one, set them all up, and then they'd be magneted in, which would be really handy, but that's a lot of time that I just don't feel like spending. When for me, the washi tape just works as well. So, we've got our tube of watercolor. We're just gonna squeeze. And I like to kind of squeegee it off the side of the pan. Start squeezing from the bottom of the tube and we try to apply even pressure across the bottom and that way you don't get a tube with like half of the paint still left in it. Then we're going to take a piece of washi tape. You can also use double stick tape for this. Fold it over. And I actually like my colors set up in a certain way, but I'm just going to go ahead and mimic the way this palette has their set up. So we've got W012. Holbein. And we do the same thing. And we're just going to do that with all of the colors in this palette. And I will check in with you guys once I have finished filling all of these half pans. Okay, so that took a little bit of doing, but it is all set up. I'm going to need to let these paints dry. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just bend the metal holders back in. I can always tighten it up after the paints themselves have dried. But fortunately, the washi tape does a fine job holding these in place, at least once you can push it down. I keep I kept sticking my fingers in, in the wet paint, which is not something you want to do. And uh, you, it usually takes at least overnight. If you live in dry climates, it might take less time. If you live in wet climates, it's going to take longer. I don't know that I would want to do this when I live in or while living in Louisiana because, you know, it would just take years to dry. It would seem like, well, maybe a couple weeks.
and we just want it dry enough because you're going to reactivate these paints but they're never going to be or they're probably never going to be to this liquid consistency again we just want them dry enough that they're not going to fall out of the palette now something that can happen and does happen is with two paints sometimes they dry out all the way and they crack and sometimes the pieces will fall out I don't actually care all that much but you can fix that with a drop or two of glycerin I do find that glycerin can change the properties of the paint itself so that's something I usually try to avoid okay so I'm gonna check in tomorrow and show you guys what the palette looks like dry but oh and also uh, talk about cutting a map to size because you need I would make a map to go with every palette and I recommend that you do the same so I hope you guys found this helpful, useful, and informative, and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye, guys. All right, art nerds. So our watercolors have had a chance to dry out a little bit, and I went ahead and I cut a piece of cotton rag watercolor paper. This is Canson's Lacrell Heritage. It's a paper I have mixed feelings about, and it's also the same paper that when I did my swatch video, that's the paper that I used. So, hopefully we'll get some nice, consistent results. I've got my cup of clean water, and I've got my palette here. And you guys should probably know by now how to swatch, how to do mass tone swatches for a watercolor palette. You can do them at size. That's what we're going to do for this one. Kind of mix things up a little bit. And I'm going for full saturation. Since when I did the prior video, well, when I did my unbox and swatch video, I did um, like gradiated washes. So, mass tone is perfectly fine for our palette map. And since we have white over on the corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box. And I want something a little bit bigger than this. And we'll let that cure for a little bit. So we're going to do the other swatches and come back to the white. And as you can see, assembling a palette either from an existing collection of watercolors like a set you bought online or from some of your favorite colors is really easy to do and there are lots of inexpensive watercolor sets on Amazon and you can find a link to the one I'm using in this video in the description below or you can just use like um, a pill container and fill that with the colors you like. You really don't even have to use a watercolor palette, but considering how inexpensive watercolor palettes have gotten and how long they hold up and how they protect your paints, I think it's a worthwhile investment. Alright, two more. I didn't. I did not uh, activate these paints ahead of time either, since they're fairly saturated and they activate pretty quickly. Very creamy watercolor paints. All right, so I'm gonna let my map finish drying. Those colors look just gorgeous on that paper, don't they? While while they're wet, they're very vibrant and pretty. But I'm gonna let all of that dry and put it away. So I hope you found this tutorial on setting up a watercolor palette helpful, easy, and informative. I hope I've inspired you to set up your own palette. And I hope you'll check out some of my other videos here on this channel. Uh, yeah, channel. I almost said on this challenge, but here on this channel. I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye, guys!